everyone. It's Chuck Allgood with Gamora's Refrigerants, back with another quick refrigerant checkup. Today, I want to take a few minutes to help clear up any misinformation or misunderstandings you may have around two important environmental impacts facing the refrigerants industry. And they're important because regulations are being developed and have been developed to address these environmental issues. And those are ozone depletion and global warming. So I want to kind of look at both of them briefly, separately, so you know the difference and we can determine how we're going to respond to them and how the regulations are going to be shaping our industry in the future. So ozone depletion really came about in the late 1980s. Uh, a couple of researchers at MIT, Roland and Molino, who went on to win the uh, Nobel Prize for their work in this area, first published uh, the connection between chlorine making its way to the upper atmosphere, to the stratosphere, and that chlorine going through a series of chemical reactions, reacting with ozone, actually resulted in a thinning of the ozone layer. Uh, wasn't really a hole, although it was described that way. But in any event, it's set in fourth motion uh, regulations to get out of chlorine-containing compounds, long-lived chlorine-containing compounds that were the culprits in getting up into the upper atmosphere and reacting with the ozone. So things like R502, uh, CFC12, R12, things that contain chlorine, the last of those being R22, those things were being eliminated as refrigerants because of their link to stratospheric ozone depletion. And again, that was a chlorine issue which gave rise to a new generation of refrigerants starting in the early 90s, coming right off of this uh, ozone work for the HFCs, hydrofluorocarbons, no chlorine, no zero ozone pollution potential. So it kind of solved the ozone issue. So the second major environmental issue is one around global warming. And this takes different names depending on who's speaking, climate change, carbon footprint, greenhouse gases, uh, global warming. All are different ways of really describing the same uh, impact on the environment, the same environmental impact. And I've found the best way to describe that really is like a greenhouse, or maybe even it's easier to understand in terms of what happens to your car or your van on a, a hot summer day. You have light from the sun, passes through the glass windows and windshields, hits the interior of the car, and uh, heats it up. Now the heat can't escape from the vehicle. So the light comes in, but the heat gets trapped. In a way that describes what happens to our Earth. Our Earth has a natural greenhouse effect. There are gases, CO2, ozone, methane, that make up our Earth's atmosphere will always be there. And they create a natural greenhouse effect. Without that natural greenhouse effect, the Earth would be a giant ice cube. But other gases that can make their way into the atmosphere also can add to this greenhouse effect. And if left unchecked, could build up over years, years, hundreds of years to uh, unsafe levels, which is why all the concern around burning of fossil fuels, putting a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere, anything that's uh, energy intensive, has a carbon footprint associated with it, and that includes HFC refrigerants. Very, very small on a volume basis, but on a molecule for molecule basis, they can be more potent than things like CO2. And so there has to be some check on the unbridled um, buildup of those molecules as well. So as an air conditioning refrigeration industry, we're beginning to transition to lower car climate impact refrigerants. That means molecules with lower GWP, focusing on refrigerants that have really good energy efficiency because energy becomes more and more of the climate equation as leaks are reduced. But we still have to focus on things like good maintenance, leak reduction. All those good practices are important to lower the climate impact of our industry. I'll probably do another video on the regulations because the regulations are quite different. The Montreal Protocol to address ozone I took more of a phase out approach where the Kigali Amendment and other regulations are looking more at a phase down and turning the curve and reversing uh, some of the trends by going to lower GWP fluids and doing a lot of other innovative charge size reduction, uh, leak reduction, good maintenance, good service practices, good energy efficiency, etc. I hope this helped clarify. Remember, ozone depletion is related to chlorine, the CFCs. 
Global warming, a little more complex. A lot of things contribute. Even ozone, CO2, methane, hydrocarbons, just about any gas that can get in the atmosphere can contribute more or less to uh, climate change, to global warming, which is why the approach to regulate that, to, uh, to address that from an industry level, is a little more complicated. Um, I'm always open for your questions. Feel free to uh, direct message me. Send me an email. I got a lot of experts here at Camores I can call on to answer any of your questions. So uh, let us have it. Uh, thanks for checking out this video, and I hope to see you soon.